Which helmet should you race your triathlon in? A road helmet, an aero road helmet, or a full aero helmet? Today, we're gonna to help you answer that question by comparing these helmets and looking at all the factors you need to consider, including some you may not have thought of. If you've got a triathlon coming up, you want the fastest equipment, or at least nothing that's gonna slow you down. Now, of course, there is one piece of equipment that you have to use during the bike leg, and that is a helmet. And the reason and rule for this is pretty obvious. Fortunately, accidents can happen, and a helmet is there to protect your head. But in days gone by, when choosing a helmet, one of the main considerations would be how safe is it? But these days, pretty much all helmets are tested to and meet minimum safety requirements. And then, one of the main factors when choosing a helmet are how comfortable is it? And importantly, speed. Yeah, so then the perfect triathlon helmet is very lightweight, very comfortable, super aerodynamic, and has great ventilation for those really hot bike routes. The perfect triathlon helmet doesn't exist. Not yet, anyway. So you have to make some compromises. You need to weigh up what's important to you and give a little here to gain a little there. Yeah, now essentially there are three helmets to choose from, although I've got to say the lines between those can get a little blurry. A road helmet, the standard bike helmet we're all familiar with, generally very lightweight, lots of vents for comfort and coolness, and if you choose well, you'll hardly know you're wearing it. Or an aero road helmet, essentially an upgrade of the road helmet to improve the aerodynamics and save you some watts in the wind, but heavier and less breathable. Or the full aero helmet, the no holes barred, fastest lid for your head when you're flying down the race course, but heavier still and almost no vents generally. Now, if your goal is to have fun, enjoy your triathlon and speed is not really a consideration, then use the road helmet. It's light, comfortable, and the cheapest of the lot. It'll keep your head safe, and if you choose a good one, you'll barely even know you're wearing it. You can stop watching now and enjoy your triathlon. Ah, but if your goal is to go as fast as possible, then I'm afraid to say you're gonna do away with the standard road helmet. Even on the hottest day, the slowest, hilliest, mountainous course out there, the gains of an aero road helmet far outweigh the cost in weight or ventilation of a standard road helmet. So the decision comes between an aero road helmet or a full aero helmet. So let's compare them. Today we have the Met Manta Met's top of the range aero road helmet against this, the Met Drone Widebody. We're using these as our comparison to illustrate the differences, but there is an entire range of options out there, many fitting somewhere in between these two. I think before we crunch the numbers, we should test them. How about in the velodrome? Okay, James, 10 laps coming up. Aero road helmet, we've also got a heat sensor underneath. 300 watts, do your best. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Stop when I get to the left. No. Right. <laughs> okay. It's up to speed, starting the 10 laps. Now. Two laps. Five laps. It's looking good. Looks like he settled into a good rhythm, holding that 300 watts, hugging that black line, the shortest line. 10. Okay, test done. That was a lot of fun, actually. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Maybe not the most scientific. This is for GTN, after all. But we got some good data to discuss and some important, interesting points to cover. Now, we're going to look at four key areas here. We've got the weight, the time saving, the comfort, and our head temperature. First, the weight. Now, we didn't actually need to go around the velodrome to test this mark because there's little stickers inside the helmets that tell us how much they weigh. So the Met Manta weighs 250 grams, the drone weighs 370 grams. So 120 gram difference. Now, that's not very much, but 120 grams is 120 grams and people spend a lot of money to save weight on their whole setup. But unless you're on a super hilly route, 
120 grams is not going to make that much difference. Well, no, but there is actually a little bit more to it than just that and just adding 120 grams to your total weight because it's where that weight is being added. Obviously, we're adding that to our heads. That's supported by our necks for five, six or seven hours. So whilst it may not seem like very much weight you're adding when you just plonk it on your head, after five hours or so, that can be quite significant. I mean, did you notice a difference just going around the velodrome? I can't say I did, but I mean, we weren't really going around for very long. Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't a significant difference, but I think I have noticed before in Ironmans where you wear a heavier helmet, your neck does start getting sore. You also have less, less flexibility with this to actually move it around when your neck gets sore because it's stuck there in the back of your head. So significant uh, thing to, to pay attention to the weight. Yeah, well, next point we should cover then is temperature. Now, of course, it wasn't particularly hot in the velodrome today, but we did still measure our head temperatures using the little core temperature device placed within our helmets on the side of our heads. And we wore it for around 10 minutes before the tests, just so we had a nice fair starting point and then obviously wore it during the test. Now, on average, we had 37.61 for the Aero Road helmet and 37.88 with the full aero helmet. So around a 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 degrees Celsius difference. Which doesn't sound like very much. It isn't very much. And yeah, that's a fair point. It isn't a very big difference, but it is a difference. And that's gonna compound again as you go longer and longer, five, six hours in an Ironman. And it's not just the actual temperature difference because one degree or two degrees might, might make a difference or even 0 0.2 degrees. It's the subjective feeling of it feeling hotter because when you feel hot, you are hot, you're less comfortable, you're going to be less happy in your helmet for five hours on a hot race like Kona. So comfort's definitely a factor. Yeah, as you say, the longer it gets, the hotter it gets, that is going to be compounded, especially in places like Kona, and you've still got to run off. It can also be compounded the slower you're going. So if you're going on a long uphill, your head could feel like it's absolutely cooking. Yeah, and our next point goes with this point, and that's your actual comfort of your helmet. Now, obviously, if your head feels like it's cooking in the helmet, it's not going to be comfortable. And comfort's a big factor when you're out there for an iron distance. Now, obviously, as we sp spoke about, my own head comfort, you can't move your head as much in an aero helmet. You have to stay in that aero position a lot more than you do in this one, so you don't have the same flexibility. And also, you've got it over your face. I can definitely tell even on a short 10 minute test that this one is less comfortable than that. I mean, after a while, you don't even know you're wearing that helmet. Yeah, but now for the big one. Of course, we've discussed how much heavier, hotter and less comfortable the full aero helmet is, but how much time is it saving us for those penalties? Yeah, so Mark and I did the test. So we each did a run of 10 laps in the velodrome and I actually managed to do exactly the same time. I was no faster in the aero helmet which is not what we're supposed to do. But I did save four watts. Mark did significantly better than me because he actually managed to go faster in his aero helmet. For exactly the same watts. So I saved myself three seconds with the full aero helmet, which may not sound like much, but if you extrapolate that over an Ironman distance, that's three minutes and 26 seconds, which is certainly not insignificant. And so if speed is your goal, then the full aero helmet is certainly faster. Yeah, but there's a caveat to that because we were only doing two and a half kilometers, which means we were able to stay in that perfect position with no movement, head straight, everything. And we got the maximum gains. In the real world, you're gonna have all kinds of things going on. You're gonna be looking at other competitors, you're gonna be cruising through aid stations, you'll be climbing up the saddle, and you're literally gonna to have to look around at where you're going. And so you will still get some gains, but they won't be as significant as what we saw on the velodrome you won't be able to stay in the aero position the whole way. Now, that's not to say that this helmet won't still be faster. It just won't be as much faster as we've shown here today. The reality is also that if you are turning your head a lot, this bigger helmet at the wrong angle may actually be less aerodynamic than the smaller aero road helmet when it's turned sideways. Well, it's interesting you say that because as we mentioned earlier, the lines between these are getting a little blurry and there are helmets that almost sit between these two. We've got shorter tail helmets like the Coda Tronca from Met, which may suit athletes that want to move their head around a little bit more or just different riding styles. 
So in conclusion, which helmet you choose depends on a number of factors, which hopefully we have illustrated to you today and helped you with your choice. Which helmet you choose depends on the race you're doing, your riding style and your goals. Just be careful not to turn the triathlon bike leg into a really unpleasant experience with a hot and heavy helmet for the sake of a few marginal time gains. Unless you hope to win, of course, in which case you absolutely need the fastest helmet and it comes with the bonus of looking really cool while you're winning. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and it's been educational for you. If it has, hit that thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to GTN for all of our videos about all things triathlon. I mean, I do look cool in this mark, don't I? So error. I think I might just wear this home for my commute.